Carly. Jason. I called you Jason. You did? Whoa. Because <laughs> you said Carly. So I well, had to do a two. What does I call you? I won't know, but I had to do car. two two syllable thing. Hey, Car. Hey, Jay. <laughs> In the dying days of the Old West, an elderly sheriff and his posse set out to rescue their town's doctor from cannibalistic cave dwellers. Holy shit. Boom Tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where to go with that. I was like, I was like what else do I say here? <laughs> That's it. Uh, welcome to the director series where we discuss some of our favorite director's first features. Yeah. And uh, to today, be a hype man. yeah, I loved yeah. it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> woo. Today we're talking about S. Craig Zoller's Bone Tomahawk. That we are. Um, and we have. Yeah, what kind of pie do we got? We got a Michigan. Mixed berry oh. pie. Oh. Now, what does this kind of look like to you? It looks like mm, blood murder. <laughs> Skin, blood. Blood. Because this movie is fucking bloody, man. It's so gory. It's very, very gory. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this shit. There's, there's actually more information, interesting information, interesting information internet information so who knows if it's all correct but so i want to talk a lot of interesting stuff on this movie i'm gonna i want to start just talking about s craig zoller to begin with because i think okay he's a fascinating he's a writer he's a writer he's a director he's a director novelist he's a novelist we've talked about how amazing his scripts are they're fantastical he's only done three uh, you forgot you left one out. What was the, what? He also scores all of his movies. Oh, I actually didn't know that. He literally, him and his buddy, they score all the movies. So they scored this, they scored drag. And as Craig Soller has done Bone Tomahawk, mm-hmm. directing wise, has done Bone Tomahawk. Yes. Brawl and Cell Block 99. Yes. And the the most, his latest, uh, yeah. Drag the Cross Concrete. Which, so Bone Tomahawk was 2015. Yes. Brawl was 2017 concrete was 2018 yes and then we haven't really had anything since but he is one of the two writers on ridley scott's next movie oh really yeah i didn't know um uh rates of the broken land i think is what it's called sounds so serious and (laughs) he's co-writing it with uh drew goddard who did like cabin in the woods okay interesting um some episodes of Lost and then Cloverfield. He wrote this script in 2011. Mm-hmm. And I think what we see is largely the script that he wrote it is. back so in that that's, day, that's right? That's literally- um, Which is crazy. It's one of the things, they literally shot every single thing yeah. that was in the script, which um, they talk about on the on the making of, mm-hmm. hold on, because I, I had that, now I'm like, shit, hold on, where's it all? <laughs> you have to like, c- control um, F. <laughs> Oh, yeah, wow. Just open. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> Shining, shimmering splendors. I don't know the words at all. I don't I don't think maybe I have that in here. But but yeah, so they did shoot everything that's mm-hmm. in the script, um, which they were just like, holy shit, like, how are we going to do that? Like, the movie was only made for like $1.5 million. Yeah. Um, and on a very, like, it was only done like 20 days or some shit, maybe? Something like it that? was filmed in 21 days. 21 days. But they, that's how they wanted to make the movie. They wanted to make the movie like, hey, like, this is my vision. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and it's phenomenal. So good. It's a really, really good movie. I mean, I would consider this director, in my opinion, three out of three. Oh, three movies. hundred percent. Every single one is damn fucking great. I love. So from our original cast, I think originally we had. Kurt Russell, Richard Jenkins, they're both in the movie. But then we also were supposed to have Peter Sarsgaard, which I feel like I would have loved to see Peter Sarsgaard in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Jennifer Carpenter. But then as we kind of, and I think Timothy Oliphant was like a later addition, but then him and Peter Sarsgaard dropped yes due to scheduling conflict i have yes. some my why can i not find <laughs> that's um, what i'm okay, here okay, for I got, yeah yeah no, 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 the, yeah the movie originally supposed to start them mm-hmm. and they dropped out due to scheduling conflicts and were replaced with yeah patrick wilson with patrick wilson Matthew and Fox, yes and lily simmons yes i personally and i th- 
I don't remember exactly like what all happened with Matthew Fox, but I love him in this role. Like I can't imagine. I don't get me wrong. I love Timothy Oliphant, but like I can't imagine him not being yeah. this uh what's his name his name is Bruder. um i think he's like when he says i'm too vain to like be a cripple or something like that like i was just like i believe that from this guy yeah i mean i mean that i had that in my notes weird t- as as usual we're just bouncing around <laughs> fuck it um but it, for, for a director of debut you know i think this movie's phenomenal with a fantastic fit cast mm-hmm. and that in my notes i had there's two people that literally stood out to me the most. I mean, Patrick Wilson went on to do a lot of like the very the conjuring, like all those movies. So like I've seen that so many times. Yeah, and like okay, dude can pull it off. Dude does it well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matthew Fox, like like he's never. I mean, I don't I don't recall any movie where he's done something on this caliber of no. like and solid I, acting. Like Lost, good, sure, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But Lost Who? Mm-hmm. More like Bone Tomahawk what? Um, his acting is just so good in this movie. It's so um, good. And I think he said that this was his favorite project that he's ever worked on. And I, mean, I think it shows because his like it's good. It's his great. performance is so solid. So good. Yeah. Um I feel like he like fucking vanished after this movie though too. I mean he vanished kind of after I think he was canceled Lost. for some for was some he? reason. I think something I don't know. Um but but I I think that he needs to be casted in more roles like this because he definitely has the chops to act solidly. Like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Since we're on the topic of of casting, I think can we talk about David Arquette? Yes, David Arquette and Sid Haig. Is that yes. how you say his name? His last yes. name? Um make appearances at the beginning they're the first people that we meet they are they open up the movie yeah and i i think this was one of the first times that i'd seen david arquette in a while at this point in 2015 right i I think so because i think i don't remember when that documentary came out that he did which was really solid it's a solid doc you ever watch that i haven't totally can't what's it called google it i don't go on go um david arquette wrestling movie so oh, uh, that's not you, what i was the last time i feel like i oh. saw, had seen david arquette was uh he was on dancing with the stars <laughs> um okay uh so this came out in 2020 oh okay it's called you cannot kill david arquette and it's about him trying to like be in the wrestling whatever that is it's phenomenal dude i it's didn't know so that was good. the thing that he dabbled in um you actually see a lot of because this is a documentary, mm-hmm. so I don't want to say it's a movie, but like he's himself, he's being himself, but you kind of see that a lot in Bone Tomahawk. Um, and that's what's like, I always enjoyed, I always thought like David Arquette has just like a cool fucking look to him. Like he's just, he's just cool. He just seems really cool. Um, he, in my personal opinion, makes so many of the roles because he just seems like such a genuine real person that mm-hmm. i feel like he brings that into a lot of the roles that he let's say he just seems, and he just always looks like he's having fun too so that's how i felt like how he this is how like i f- saw him in this movie mm-hmm. i just felt like he was just being honest yeah you know like kind of like uh like in the bar scene and stuff when yeah. he comes back and shit um but it, like i don't know you just like see that and it's like, this guy can actually act, but I think he gets a lot of flack due to his personal life. For sure. And maybe the Scream movies, like the Dewey character is kind of silly. Um, but I love Dewey, don't get me wrong. I you just Dewey. gave me a fucking look like, I was hurt. Ex- fucking excuse me? I was really hurt when you just said that. Because that is, I mean, I feel like that's no, 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 such I, a... But I, I like, but he may, I couldn't picture anybody else playing that Dewey no. role. So I think it's done well, but I feel like a lot of people kind of don't take it seriously either because it is kind of, he's a kind of comedic guy in that movie. But yeah, he's, I think he's that's... He's doofus, you well, know? he did <laughs> Eight-Legged Freaks. Like, that's just his yeah, style that's of acting, another, yeah, I feel that's another like. thing too. You know what I mean? But like, when he actually acts, I feel like, this dude could fucking act. No, like, yeah. I want to see him in more movies like this. And it's just a shame that like, I don't think that we'll get more movies like that. I think um, that's a shame too, because I think, um, and we, you and I know how I feel about the newer Scream movies. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly care for them. Spoiler alert. Um, But I think that David Arquette's performance in that, the the, the new, in the new, the first new one. Yeah. 
was so I thought good. That was awesome. There are so many things. He was the <laughs> best part about that movie for me. <laughs> There's like so many when they're all sitting around there oh, they're talking about the requel bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> the shit that he's just like, it's like, let's go, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you're the killer because you just stabbed my heart and it really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His like his comedic chops were so there, but also like his like like drama acting. You could yeah. see that, like the pain or whatever. Oh, like totally. he I think that was like one of his best performances that I've ever seen him in. Yeah. And so yeah. um I remember seeing this movie when it came out and just being really excited to see him again. Um, did you see this in the theater? I did not see this in theater. Samesies. I saw it streaming. Yeah. I don't I mean, know how I stumbled upon it. I think this was, um, I don't know. Cause, and you know what too? Cause this is very much a Western. Oh yeah. I mean, it, what, what, what else would it be? Well, like not like, there are horror aspects to it, but it's it's not a standard. Western, yeah, it's not a straight. I feel like it, you think it's a straight western. I feel like oh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, like I would categorize it as like western, the, the but it's body like body horror. It's got horror elements. The body horror, I feel like, makes yeah. it horror. There's body horror in this movie. Oh, oh is there? <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll get there. We will get there because yeah. I don't, I'm just like fuck. Like, where do we begin talking about this movie? So, I mean, I'm gonna say this before kind of jumping into some other stuff but definitely i think you'll bounce off of this as well this movie's a great movie oh 100 percent. but it's also a great movie to fall asleep to oh 1000 <laughs> percent. but you know what saying that i watched this movie within the past couple like this morning i finished it i started it yeah. last night before i went to sleep you and i had spoken about it because this movie is what i think is kind of the definition of a slow burn but like stuff happens too it's yeah. not all just like slow 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 like there's some like shit that goes on in the middle that i was like oh i don't remember this because it'd been a minute since i'd seen this movie before i watched it for the podcast so like i didn't remember it starting out with some gore i didn't remember um like kind of the stuff that happens on the journey with mm -hmm. the guys kind of mm -hmm. coming into their camp and getting killed and then like all of that kerfuffle, if you will. There are there are there are happenings. Yeah. Throughout the that movie keep that keep you interested. Before you get to the what the fuck is just going on at the end. Yeah, but when that happens. But when that happens, it you just Mr. Yeah. Zoller yes. has his a movies. knack. Yeah. I, I mean I for just wait till the last thirty to forty five minutes. Which which literally I have that in notes where it says <laughs> like, you know, before Zoller went on to direct, he wrote such movies like Asylum Blackout. Mm-hmm. I saw it once. It's it's not bad, but it ain't nothing like this guy's filmography. But his writing is super solid. Mm -hmm. I've read the scripts to his movies a few years back. Like think during the pandemic, like mm -hmm. he sells them on like his website for like three dollars or some shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, you get like a PDF of it or whatever. Um, but he's a solid actor and um, writer. Writer, thank you. Uh, I don't know he, how he is acting. Maybe he's a solid actor maybe too. He's a, <laughs> he might be. I don't know. Uh, but he's also become the filmmaker that is just like, yeah, just just wait till the end. <laughs> like this is like and that, dude to be honest with you like i said this uh to my cousins before we were recording that i was like Soller is such a solid writer yeah oh that line that his, i sent you yeah, i was like his dialogue's so good that i kind of like i would put him in tarantino kind of like i could see it but also i kind of feel like maybe maybe i'm, I'm just saying i think the last couple tarantino movies may have bit off of solar a bit oh think about I could it see like it. The, the whole fucking like oh my, just wait till the end yeah once upon a time in hollywood is a great example wait till the fucking end it's like okay we're here we're here we're here that's a good point because oh, when man, i was watching that happens. movie i was like i know where this is kind of going but do yeah. i and then yeah. i was like but yeah no they're they're there's just solid just really solid have you ever seen this in theater no, I would uh, fucking love to see this. I would see this movie in DCP. Like, oh well, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't it wasn't shot on film, was so it's it not. Like, I, I thought no, it was. It was shot on, uh, which Maybe actually I'm is a note. Uh, I don't think I put it in my notes here, but Maybe I'm thinking of something it was shot with a red dragon. But actually, Soller did not like the how noisy the red dragon was. So for brawl, oh, that's and, what I was seeing. Cell block. Mm -hmm. He used a different um, red. I think I forget which one it was. Different red camera, digital tech shit nerds um, do you know what's funny what? i ju like just saw this which what? is why um so like some of the criticisms of this film um were from people like reviewers or whatever from certain publications saying that the violence was 
basically a copycat of Quentin Tarantino. Oh, really? Uh, his use of brutality in films. Yeah. For this I movie mean, in particular. I don't know, man. Like This movie? Quentin Tarantino movies. Like, this movie I takes... I think so. Oh, wow. Some of the brutality in this movie in particular. I mean, I'm listening. In this... <laughs> The, the part at the end that I told you about, the deputy, mm-hmm. I've never seen anything like that in Quentin Tarantino's films. I think just because Tarantino gets more flack for it. Yeah. Because he's Don't get me wrong. Bigger. QT is definitely brutal AF, but that, I forgot about that scene. Yeah. And I was like, oh, <gasps> Oh yeah. I was yeah. like, why is that man naked? And then I was like, why is he upside down? And yeah. then I was like, oh no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which we won't go in description. We're not gonna one hundred percent spoil it, but shit no. happens. That's um, what you call it. <laughs> I guess like talking about being on the topic of uh Tarantino and stuff, like Russell uh Kurt Russell has mm-hmm. praised Soller's skills as a director, oh, especially yeah. since Bone Tomahawk and is uh his directorial debut. Russell described Sheriff Franklin Hunt as a stubborn and simple good man whose behavior and tone were very in line with the error in the film. His comparison of Hunt to Wyatt, Wyatt Earp, mm-hmm. Earp, Earp, Earp. What, Earp. But in addition, since Russell was also involved in The Hateful Eight at about the same exact time, he had to look different between two films in regards to the style of hair and beard, remarking, I had to cheat it. So the look I have in Bone Tomahawk was sort of a halfway house thing, halfway to where I was going for Hateful Eight. It's a full blown maturity in Hateful Eight. I didn't realize that these two movies were so close either. together. Me either. That's I didn't really fascinating. realize that either when I was uh, doing research on this movie. That's completely fascinating. Yeah. One of um, the reasons why I kind of got the bug to watch this movie again was um, an interview that I saw that I believe I sent to you of. Um, Kurt Russell and his son talking about do they watch themselves on in movies Mm -hmm. and why it was like no and Kurt's like well the thing was on the other day but he like also mentioned this movie and I was like fuck Bone Tomahawk like I was like I need to revisit that immediately because that movie is so good it's good it's 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 a really good movie and um when seller when selling debut too oh well totally yeah um when selling the movie to investors seller used directors such as john cassavetes Mm -hmm. larry clark wong kar way sorry uh and takashi kintano kitano katano as stylistic reference points despite none being filmmakers in the western genre Despite Sonier's, uh, D- Dallas Sonier, the producer of the movie, uh, assurances that there will be no intervention in the script, which we talked about earlier, investors still wanted the script to be changed due to conflicting interpretations of the film's genre and the film being Saller's directorial debut. Saller refused to compromise on full creative control and reducing the film length to 90 minutes. Which imagine this movie being 90 minutes. So if this movie was 90 minutes just in and out like that, like, holy shit bags. I don't know if I would have. I. <laughs> I mean, it would have just. I, I would be watching it more often than not. I don't know. I mm. think I like. I prefer the pacing of this because I think. I am someone who prefers to like spend time with the characters in movies. Like I want to know them. I want to like. I don't know. Have a reason to kind mm-hmm. of care about them at the end. Them. Be buds. I want to be buds. I want to like. No, the characters like Chicory are just like so endearing and how they kind of fall into place with all of the other characters that we have. Like there's a reason why we are going to like save the deputy and save uh, Samantha. You know what I mean? Like I believe I believe these characters are real. And I think that he does a great job of like building out that world for us. Yeah. I mean, Saller has uh, previously written four westerns, mm-hmm. making Bone Tomahawk to Hawk, ugh, making Bone Tomahawk his fifth work in the western genre. The concept of Bone Tomahawk arose when Saller's manager, producer, and friend Dallas Sonier pro- pro- ugh, proposed he make a film adaptation of his novel *Wraiths of the Broken Land*. Which is that? What? Is that what you just said for the mm-hmm. Ridley Scott one? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, directed by Saller himself. However, Saller believed the novel could not be adapted on a low budget and opted to write a rescue western, Bone Tomahawk, instead. Hence why Ridley Scott's doing it. 
Yeah, Ridley's just like, listen, I'll come on in. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. I don't know. And it'll go either way. Don't know why I just gave Ridley Scott a Australian, Australian accent, accent. But anyway, um, the script was written in 2011, mm -hmm. apparently. That's what I said. I know. I'm good. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Saller had previously completed more than 40 original screenplays for Hollywood. Yeah. Including the Brig Brigands of Rattleburg? Borge? Brigands. Yeah. But only one was made. Only one And that was made. the asylum, what's it called? Blackout? Exactly. Yes. In 2011. In 2011. And, and then Saller was still just waiting like, guys, I'm going to make something really good. You fucking watch. Mm -hmm. But he didn't get that break until 2015. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess technically. Well, he started making it. He, well, he started getting his ducks in a row a year later because they started casting in 2012. Yeah. With Kurt, Mr. Russell, if you will. Yeah. It's just so impressive. Yeah. I mean, we previously talked about Duel mm -hmm. being Steven Spielberg's first movie. Stevie. S good old St Stevie Spielberg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our mm -hmm. bud. Mm -hmm. Um. Which was amazing, especially as like a TV movie. This, I feel like, is very well known in the horror community, but I think outside of it, like, does not get talked about enough. It does. I don't think any of his movies do. No. Not really. Which is surprising. It really is. I mean. Because at the very least, I think, is Concrete, would you say, his most popular? I would say it's, so that's what I was, or just about to bounce block. off of that, of like, um. I feel like Concrete is only so popular mm -hmm. because of the shit that he got because of the movie. Mm. I don't know if you remember. There was like so much press about it. Like, oh, it's like praising um, like cops and police brutality. Oh. And shit like that. I don't know if you remember like all those no. like, articles that kept coming out like after I think it screened at like, I don't know, some pr prestigious film festival. Mm. Um and that's, oh, it's got Mel Gibson in it. So that means blah, blah, because Mel Gibson's fucking checkered past. Okay. So, like, it got, like, a lot of flack for that. But I wouldn't say that, like, any of his movies, like, nobody really, like, I don't know. I'm not just like, going in passing, like, talking to people, like, yo, man. I think unless. Cross Concrete was dope. No. <laughs> like, no, it never comes up. <laughs> I think to your point, um, the only people that I know that, like, really talk about his work are like other film fans and like film I've never buffs. come across someone though. I have, but I actually think, no, cause I'm thinking of someone who's like a horror fan. I literally never like had a conversation of like any three of these movies. Like, I mean, in, like with my cousins and that's yeah. only if I'm bringing it up, but yeah. nobody's like ever just like, yeah, dude, fucking Bone Tomahawk, sick movie. Yeah. I've never talked to someone that just would randomly say that. Oh, I have. Really? But we've also... You also have more friends than me, so... <laughs> well, I also um, did it on Final Girls. We talked about it probably, like, the year after. Oh, okay. Or a year or two after it came out. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. That's a little different. But obviously not dragged across concrete or... I mean, yeah, I just brawl. feel like nobody really brings them up, and I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I also feel like... If dude got a studio movie out, people would talk about his filmography a bit mm -hmm. more, I think, because then it would put him on a different level. But like. I also this, wonder if maybe he just doesn't care. Because it's like he's an author. Like yeah. he's making these doesn't movies. Care about what? Just like the um, commercial success. Like he very much seems like this is the movie that I'm going to make. I'm making it for myself. Totally, like yeah. I don't. Yeah, this but, is. I'm gonna make what I want to make. But in 2024, I mean, I mean, even in 2020 or 2018, like I feel like if he was just even with like a 24, yeah, like boom, like he would be on a different map. Oh yeah, he and he's in a band, yeah, <laughs> heavy man. metal band. Yes, I've listened to it. It's it's not bad. On a Swedish record label. Yes, amazing. Yes, um, love a black metal moment. Yes, <laughs> always. Um, but uh. But yeah, I feel like, yeah, if he was just on like a, I think at A24 level, he would just be brought onto like a different caliber. Um, but I mean, dude, like, no offense, but his movies are being released through the same distributor that released my movie. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, they can only do so much. And keep in mind, too, all of his movies never got like really a theatrical release. 
it would always just be a day day and date but like even out here like even when dragged across concrete came out i saw it at beyond fest yeah and then i saw it on v- on vod yeah i didn't see it playing in like any small theaters or anything no. it may have but i just don't know i don't think so it looked like they were primarily kind of premiered at film festivals mm-hmm. which is so interesting but also he had a novel or he has a novel called mean business on north ganson street and apparently he was supposed to this is also in 2013 so i'm sure things have changed yeah. but like he was supposed to write a script to that it, that was supposed to star leonardo dicaprio and jamie fox yeah, yeah, yeah. like that would have put him on a fucking map yeah okay you're gonna love this fact love facts apparently it's a fact i don't know <laughs> But the cave set in the last act of the movie was oh. the same cave yep. set used in Iron that. Man yep. 2008 where Tony Stark is he held captive that Iron and constructs Man suit. the first Iron Man suit. <laughs> yep. I read that and I was like, Carly would love that. Yep, yep, yep. But I should have known that you probably looked that up as well. I recall. Um, I feel like this movie uh, is just a movie where nobody can be trusted for some weird reason. I don't know. Yeah. Um, like Kurt Russell grabs a gun at the end. I feel like he's just going to shoot everybody. I don't know why I felt like that watching it this time around, but I just feel like he was just going to like, it was like, fuck everybody. I'm dying. Oh no, he was going to shoot all of the. No, I know. I yeah. know. I know. But I'm just saying how I felt when he first oh, got there. Oh. Hey, let me get that gun. Bang, bang, bang. I don't know why I felt that way, but I felt that way. I didn't feel that way, um, Kurt. Ri- and then, but then Richard Jenkins grabs a rock at the end. I felt he was just going to fucking bash motherfuckers in the head. I don't know why I felt like that watching it this time around. I just felt like nobody could be trusted and maybe it's because throughout the movie there's just darts and shit being thrown from all directions killing people so yeah but not like at, not at the core know. group no i know i know <laughs> but i'm just like i don't know i just got like that sensational feeling and obviously i know that it wasn't going to happen because i've seen the movie before but it just that's how yeah. it felt like it's just it was a movie where like you just couldn't trust people there were so many moments that i felt like were so solid and i think one of my favorite things is the way that everything does happen so fast. Like when they're, you know, coming upon the lair or whatever Mm -hmm. and shots just start getting fired and like Chicory's part of his skull is like gone and Mm -hmm. like, it's just so effective because you're sitting there like, oh, they're, you know, settling down. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah. Like what the fuck just happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Matthew Fox is down. <laughs> like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, it's so good. Um. Uh, speaking of the ending, which I texted you earlier, I said I love the part when the bullet falls in Russell's R- mouth. Russell's mouth and yeah. he just spits it out. Yeah, real quick. Dude, like, like I kind of feel like that was like not supposed to I don't happen think or it something. Was either because that was like so organic, like it just felt different. Yeah, when that happened, it was just fucking amazing. It felt like dude. such a happy accident, <laughs> and then he's like, he's got a gun. So yeah, I think that was a happy accident for sure. Yeah. Um. And th- yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I fuck. I love it though. It's just so. He's good. like, and he's yeah. like, he's got a gun. Dude, it's not, it was not even that fast. It was like, pfft, like yeah. it's like a bang. Pfft. Like yeah. it was like a literally like a one. Like it was like, because it that there wasn't a cut, right? There was just, it just dropped into his mouth, right? There was, but it was like kind of slightly delayed because there's a uh, a shot of the guy like emptying the yes. gun or like yeah, yeah, reloading yeah. it, yeah, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And then a cut to. Curtain, him on the ground like, right it's that low yeah. angle okay. that's why it kind of feels like that wasn't supposed to be but I they, mean, they got could, it they, they could have had two cameras rolling those uh, yeah, and one no, was up in there they got so. it and they were just like yes yeah yes yeah because like there was no hesitation what's right it was just no. like, ah, ah. <laughs> it was like bang bang <laughs> so, it, also imagine how many times they would have had to sh- shoot it oh, to yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah like i feel like that like you couldn't do that again if you tried no um I'm sorry. Go on. No, oh, that's that's <laughs> it. I was just like, it's so good. It's so good. Going back to Tarantino talk. Mm-hmm. Fred Raskin was a co-editor on this movie. Oh, interesting. And Fred Raskin took over editing duties when um, Sally Menke passed away. Tarantino's original editor. Mm-hmm. So I found that kind of interesting. Damn, Fred Raskin is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What up, Fred? What up? He also edited Guardians of the Galaxy. Which one? I don't know. The first one? All of them. Volume one? <laughs> All of them. Ooh. He directed, he, I mean, he edited some funny movies. So, yeah, it was him and Greg Doria that they both edited. Mm-hmm. And they also both worked on 
The Lazarus Project. Guardian. <laughs> Kill, Bl- Kill Bill. <laughs> Brawl. Star Trek Beyond. Oh. Interesting. Oh, Fast and Furious. He was the assistant editor. This is Greg, not Raskin. Which Fast and Furious? Um, Tokyo Drift, as so, well as Fast and Furious in 2009. So the so Tokyo Drift, Fred Raskin edited it? Do you think that's where they met? I like Maybe. just creating stories in Maybe. my head that yeah, like yeah, yeah. aren't real. I'm like, they became besties when they did Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Maybe. Because then he also edited Fast and Furious, Fred Raskin, and Fast Five. And Let's then see. when he got that fucking Tarantino check, he was like, I'm out. Yeah. Oh, yep. He was on Fast Five too. Greg. Greg was also on Fast Five. Well, no. What, what else did Greg do after that? Um, is After he, that, is, he did do Django Unchained. He's an assistant editor, if anything. Additional editor. First assistant editor on Django. All right, Fred. Sorry, Enough we're, yapping we're about going. you. This isn't about you, <laughs> That Fred. was Greg. That was Greg. Greg was assistant editor on... Uh, I don't, want, I don't want any confusion. I was reading Greg's uh, IMDb profile. Sorry, Greg. It's not about you. I love it. I love when we do things like this and look at one director's kind of like body of work, but obviously like this is where they started and just seeing how those relationships kind of foster and continue throughout their careers. Yeah. Because the greats usually have that like really strong support system, which I think is really awesome. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about Bone Tomahawk besides that it was a good movie. As Craig Saylor went on to do two other really good movies, um, both slow burn, both solid, mm-hmm. both just movies. Um, I'm really I'm excited to see what he does next. That's for damn sure. But don't know when that's happening. It's I want to read one of his novels. I've never read one of his. I was books. actually thinking the same damn thing, but you know me and books. Yeah, I'm just t- I'd, I'd audio book it. it. They, just uh, audible I, f- I feel like if they were on audible though i would they're 100 on audible you sure oh, okay it is look up that the narrow caves it's narrated by wyatt russell i fucking love it that's fantastic it's actually, actually it's pretty uh, narrated by wyatt russell lily simmons vincent diana frio will Patton. I'd put, fuck. I'd listen to this but it, it added add to cart hold on i'm kind of curious though if it's on the spotify audiobooks i stopped my uh my i didn't audible. know that that was a thing you serious yeah i didn't know spotify had audiobooks <gasps> oh what? it's literally everything it's audible but on spotify oh i see i have so many audible credits that i Dude. will never i will never ever run out my fucking auto i got like an email today like all your audible credits are they've went away you can't do that because i don't think it's legal because you they paid for them fucking did it <laughs> i also want to give a shout out to david abbott who did special effects makeup on this movie who also worked on Coneheads. That's awesome. I know. I mean, we didn't really talk about the ending and the craziness that it is, but like, it's just, it's fucking crazy. I'm not gonna li- like. Can I be gross? Be gross. Come on, Carly. Oh my gosh. Come on. I got, I got the, I got the, 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 the. This was <laughs> so gross. disturbing. Cause I was just like, okay, well, obviously, like our deputy dude's naked. Some shit's gonna go down. Nakey, nakey. And then not only. <laughs> I feel weird saying, like, I don't know if this is like... <laughs> Where are you going? I'm just going to say what happens. You say what happens. I don't give a shit. The, when he... I was like, okay, they're scalping him, which, like, makes sense. But then when they, like, put his scalp in his mouth before flipping him over, I was just like, oh. They had a technique. Oh, we're going. <laughs> we're, go- we're doing they this. They had a technique. Also, the creativeness of, like, this... Like the lore behind these people mm. is just completely fascinating to me. They live in um, this the, like mountain rock side. It's they're the, called the troglodytes. The troglodytes. Troglodytes. The um, the men are obviously like the number ones. They only have women to breed. They use this. I don't know how they they make it. But like, it looks like they like implant something into their vocal cords so mm-hmm. they can make mm-hmm. that like yeah, crazy when, noise. When, when Patrick goes like, is that, is that jewelry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then he's like, I'm gonna cut it out of your throat. Scoops that shit out. Yeah. yeah and then he, he scoops it out. And then he like, I was like, oh yeah. no. I, I mean, was man, like, I would wipe it off. 1800s, totally different. I would wipe Definitely it off. Definitely pre-pandemic. <laughs> oh my God. I was like grossed out for him. Yeah. Um, But just, I love that we learn 
enough. I love that Samantha, I almost called her Rebecca. I love that Samantha is super observant and Mm. she's like, this is the breakdown. Like these are the two guys that are serious business. Like she gives us as like everything that we essentially know about this race, which I think is completely fascinating. I will say I'm surprised they didn't kill the women at the end, the pregnant people at the end because who didn't kill them? The, the Patrick Wilson. Oh, and it's like, keep, let's just keep going. Yeah. I, I mean, those women I think it's had just, their eye, like they had things in their eyes. Yeah. They were like that's not they were chained up literally just I would just be like, let's get, exactly let's get the fuck out of here. I probably I don't know. I would I feel know. like I might have put I them out like, of their misery. I'd be like, there's three others, because he says that there's three other ones, right? Yeah. There's three left or some shit. I'd be like, Yeah. I just feel like out. there's no way Sorry. for them to live. Sorry. But they look like it was like two pets, because like they were like kind of like like they looked more so like what the triggered dots Tro- the, chocolate the, yeah whatever um they look like more so them like they had like like white paint on them and no stuff they too. were chocolateites but oh, they okay. were tied up they were literally yeah. the women were just used for breeding so they were literally tied up yeah. in this little enclave yeah, so i would just pieced out they had wooden yeah. stakes in their eyeballs yeah, yeah, out but like you wouldn't have been like no that's no way to live Not a, i'd be like sucks am i too compassionate i feel like gotta fucking go <laughs> you can't see shit the the hassle that this is going to be dragging these motherfuckers across feel... to go f- fight for my survival That's like they're already, they already got their it. eyes out they're pregnant they probably haven't walked in months no. days maybe who knows you know so like that would just be no too much. Ugh. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Those poor you know women. What? Kill the other three, and I'll think about coming back. Okay. How about okay. That? That's fair. But other than that, let those three come through. I let, felt let, so bad for let them. Let Kurt fucking kill them off, and then maybe I'll come back. Kurt. 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 All right. So this movie, uh, it was released um, in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few. It literally says a few theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like it probably was that. Um, and it grows four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Hmm. And uh, but a total plus a total of four point twenty eight million dollars in home media sales. Wow. Yeah. Off of a budget of one point eight million dollars. So you're grossing. I mean, to this day, it's easily made at least five million dollars mm-hmm. in video sales. So this was a movie I would buy. I did buy it. I digitally. didn't. I watched it on Hulu. That's all I gotta say about the bones of the Toms and the Hawks. It's closed out. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>